The vicar of Eskom smokes cannabis in a special TV experiment. I'm Dermot Murnahan. Tonight's big story, could the hippie drug ease the pain of thousands? A small section of my congregation and uh, one or two of my friends think I'm stark staring mad and that uh, all that will happen is that this program will be used to sensationalize the, the pot-smoking vicar. Good evening from one of Amsterdam's many coffee shops. People here are openly buying and smoking cannabis. Now, they're doing it for pleasure, but we're here with a serious purpose at the start of a medical experiment. A survey next week will show that more than two-thirds of British doctors now believe that cannabis should be made legal under strict controls for medical use. It's claimed it can help sufferers from multiple sclerosis, AIDS, cancer, and serious spinal injuries. Now, we've brought a group of people with some of those conditions with us to Amsterdam to try it out for themselves. And by the end of this program, we'll see whether it works. Heathrow Airport, Tuesday morning. The first members of our test group Hi. set out. Hi, how are you? You're I'm coming fine. on this experiment? Yes. yes. Sounds very interesting. Very interesting, yes. yes. And, and have you ever taken cannabis? No, I have not taken no. cannabis. I take Judy cannabis. Lewis I and Dorothy Dunford that. are both housewives from the south of England. Have you got any bags to check in at all there? Both women suffer from multiple sclerosis. Um, I was diagnosed when I was 28, and I'm 56 now, no, so that's I'm, 28 years ago. I've had it for 33 years. 33? Yes. And do you know, they say 20 years is your limit, so we're past our self We are past you our self We really are. Baroness Massam of Ilton, a member of the Parliamentary Committee on Drugs Misuse, is coming to watch the experiment. Wherever I sit in non-smoking. It's all non-smoking. Okay. We've saved a seat for oh, you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's your boarding card and your passport, and you're welcome to wait the time as you're around as well. Okay. Thanks very Thank much. You. Thank you. Our group wants to check out reports that cannabis might help them, but as it's illegal and they're law-abiding, they're going to Amsterdam to find out more. I have a very open mind. And I shall look and see and make my judgment. I read articles in newspapers, and it's supposed to help you with muscle spasms, pain, and possibly helping with uh, bladder control. If there is a substance, substance, no matter what it is, it should be available on prescription for people who could benefit by it. You know, it's, it seems so wrong that there is something that can benefit people and that it's not available. It's crazy. You need to go through two of these things. Travelling separately is the Reverend Nicholas Beddo, vicar of Eskom in County Durham. Yes, and then He knows he's going to upset some of his congregation by smoking cannabis on TV. But the pain and fatigue caused by his multiple sclerosis has given him an open mind. Why is it that this one drug, which seems uh, not to have any ferocious side effects, has, can, can be said without any trial whatsoever to have no good uh, medical effects? As a result of his illness, the Reverend Beddo is almost blind in one eye. He feels there's nothing to lose by seeing if cannabis can help. From my own point of view, I don't know. Um, I shall certainly be interested to try it. If there is any improvement in vision in my left eye, I shall leap for joy. And so, you know, my own view of the results, I hope, will carry some credibility. And I think also somebody's got to do it. Tuesday afternoon, Amsterdam. Here, the use of cannabis is tolerated. Tonight, our group is going to try it. There's never been a full-scale clinical trial of cannabis, and this won't be either, but it might give some clues. The Grand Prix Hash Cafe. There are hundreds like it in Amsterdam. Right. Oh, the, the uh, Ten Gilders Super Sense. A 
dope deal is an everyday event. Respectable people sell cannabis. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Cool top. And law-abiding people buy it. So, kijk eens. Alsjeblieft. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Doei. Doei. For British people, this is a pretty amazing experience. Okay, this is the menu, and these are the marijuana. The youngest member of our group is Andreas Kamp, who's paralyzed by a spinal injury. He's advised what to buy. Super Sense, the Sense Amelia. Yeah, it's very good. Super Sense has very nice buds like this. And you show you later. Pick them off. Yeah. Yeah. Bring it down later so you can look. And finally, there's David Kavanagh, who has AIDS. He's already a regular user of cannabis. I'll show you later how it looks like. In London, he has to skulk down dark alleys to get the drug, which he says is the only thing which gives him an appetite to fight his wasting disease. I'm getting it illegally, and I'm not a criminal as far as I'm concerned. That's why I feel it should be legalized. He uses a quarter of an ounce a month, and he tries to buy it from dealers he knows. Like if you can't get it off your regular supplier, then you know you'll go to the area that's most well known and you can get ripped off you can get beaten up you can get stabbed or shot tonight he strikes lucky he meets a dealer he knows and trusts the transaction is made but it's a risk only a few months ago he was caught by police and cautioned Back in Amsterdam, it's all in the open, and the women in the group are enjoying a novel shopping experience. They're looking for some good cannabis to smoke. The Baroness examines the goods. Right. Mm. It smells wonderful. Have you smelled it? I've smelled it, yes. Like a herb. I don't like the smell of it. It's too strong. Like a herb. Mm. It really has a beautiful, beautiful smell. Mm. You, you think it's too strong? Yes. Are you going to try it? I don't know. There are already many seriously ill people in Britain who use cannabis. They say it really helps their conditions. Jeff Vincent has suffered from multiple sclerosis for five years. He used to be a sheet metal worker. He says that cannabis is the only drug which controls the violent spasms, one of the symptoms of the disease. Drugs prescribed by his doctors just didn't work. Before I smoke cannabis, before I go to bed, I can sleep. More importantly, my wife can sleep. Um, the whole family can sleep, the neighbours can sleep, and I have had complaints from the neighbours because that's how bad the spasms are in the night. Having two daughters, I'm obviously not into the drug scene. But um, if you're suffering a lot of discomfort, something's got to go. And, and my family were more keen on the idea than I was because it makes me more even-tempered and easier to live with. Paul is also partially paralysed. He has great difficulty getting the supply of cannabis he says he needs. I use him uh, only in the evening because he ensures that I have a good night's sleep. And I find that the following day, my spasm is greatly reduced. First of all, I approach somebody in a pub and uh, it was quite disastrous because they took my money and didn't come back. And that happened on a couple of occasions. When you think of drugs like heroin, that are highly addictive and very dangerous, that are prescribed every day, I resent that. I think it's a very lopsided view of um, the law as it stands. But across the Atlantic, if you're lucky, you can get your cannabis supplied by the state. 
Hidden away somewhere in deepest Mississippi lies a secretive U.S. government installation. In summer, these fields bloom with marijuana. As the result of one man's remarkable legal battle, the U.S. government has been forced to supply some of this crop to its own citizens. If it weren't for marijuana, I'd be introducing you to my guide dog, Rex. Uh, I'd be walking the streets with a white cane. I'd be unable to see the universe that I live in. These are Robert Randall's joints being packed for delivery. He receives 300 a month, distributed from a secret research laboratory in North Carolina. A victim of the chronic eye disease glaucoma, Randall made American legal history to win the right to smoke cannabis. His court battle began back in 1975 when he was charged for growing his own cannabis plants. The judge concluded that any person who knew that marijuana could prolong their eyesight uh, would break the law to obtain marijuana to do that. So I was found not guilty. And he didn't stop there. He fought through the courts to win the right to take cannabis on prescription. A small group of others followed his example. Now he can smoke his joints in freedom. I go to my doctor, he uh, evaluates my condition, he writes a prescription. I take that prescription then to a pharmacy that's been designated here in Washington. They come out and give me a cookie tin full of marijuana and I bring it home. But there are only nine people in the U.S. who can take cannabis legally. Others who try to fight the laws can end up in prison. This is San Diego County Jail, where a campaigning HIV sufferer is behind bars for using and promoting cannabis. Sam Skipper was sent away for refusing to stop growing the plant he says he needs for the good of his health. We were allowed in to interview him. To speak to him, we had to use the prison's antiquated phone system. But things could be changing. The Clinton administration is currently reviewing the special scheme under which Robert Randall is allowed to use cannabis. It's considering allowing more people to join in. And Clinton's Surgeon General stated before she took office that she's in favor of cannabis being given to the seriously ill for medical use. The cannabis crusaders believe things are moving their way. I think that when you get to a point where laws can no longer be enforced because juries find them uh, profoundly unethical, immoral, evil, uh, that something has got to change. And I think that we're on the verge of that in the United States. First of all, let me welcome... Amsterdam, you. Tuesday evening. It's time for our experiment to begin. On hand is a sympathetic British doctor, Clive Inman, a spinal injury specialist. A Dutch authority on drug use explains how to smoke cannabis. They'll take a tiny amount. The object is to relieve pain, not to get high. Yeah, for those who are trying it for the first time, how much would you suggest that they smoke? Um, I would suggest just take a, a small amount of it, keep it for a not all too long period in your lungs, and then just let it go. OK, well, David, would you like to yeah. like as well? And Andrea, yeah. uh, kind of dead. Uh, the experts suggest they smoke rather than eat or drink the cannabis as the effects will be easier to control. Well, Judy, do you want to uh, go ahead and try it? Oh, can I do that? I yeah. <laughs> it's, it's working all right. Uh, <coughs> Is that a strange <laughs> sensation? Do you smoke normally? Not anymore. Oh. Andreas inhales <laughs> deeply. I used to. I used to smoke 40 a day. How does that I'm feel? It felt strange because I haven't smoked for yeah. 12 years, so it felt very strange at the beginning. But I haven't had any woozy effect or anything as yet. It's defined as, as, as a drug 
uh, in Britain because there are worries um, about its addictive properties. Do you have any worries about that? Uh, that's why it needs to be carefully evaluated and controlled. It's not, <coughs> we're not advocating that everybody uh, should use it, and certainly not everybody who has multiple sclerosis or, or a spinal injury or, or whatever uh, are going to find it useful. Andreas, you had, what, two or three puffs there? or Yeah, quite a lot. How do you feel? I'm feeling the effect. I am, I've certainly gone very calm all over, my tingling sensation in my legs, and a very warm feeling, and the whole upper body is gradually going quite limp. <laughs> is it how you expected it to feel? No, it's quite stronger, a lot stronger. I can feel myself going uh, can, out of control. And I'm going to say this, but, you know, don't worry, Mum. Because <laughs> 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 I can feel her say, no, I, I told you so. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm having trouble concentrating now. <laughs> Is it something that you think you'd like to continue no. trying back I can out? say that before you uh, finish the question. I d you know, I'd rather have a few drinks and feel <laughs> pleasant, you know. Uh, because you're losing control. I can feel the control going. Let's just ask Judy here. How, it's, what, 20 minutes since you had your first puff there. Has it had any effect? My mouth is very dry. I could be asleep in two seconds flat. <laughs> <laughs> I had tingling like um, Andreas in my legs, but that's virtually gone now. Um, I was hot and I'm now cold. But would these feelings be any help to you in controlling your MS? I don't know. Well, I'm uh, very much against illegal <laughs> drugs, but um, if cannabis, for instance, helps severely disabled people with some very severe problems of spasm, muscle spasm and pain, uh, then surely it's worth evaluating it and looking at it and assessing it but some doctors remain very concerned about using cannabis for medical purposes. It contains more than 60 active compounds, many of which have unknown effects. It's more carcinogenic than tobacco. It can cause changes in blood pressure and even contribute to angina and heart attacks. You may have the unpleasant type reactions, such as anxiety, um, depressive type reactions, paranoid reactions. And with increasing dose, people may also experience hallucinations and delusions and in some cases may become acutely confused and need admission to hospital. Next week's BMA survey of 400 British doctors will show that more than two-thirds believe cannabis should be available under strict controls but they don't want just any GP to have the right to prescribe it. In terms of health consequences if cannabis was to be used on a widespread basis one would have to be concerned about long-term health-related problems, such as we've seen the story emerge with cigarettes over the last few decades. But in Santa Cruz, California, such concerns seem far away. These are the citizens for medical marijuana getting set for their regular delivery round. Every week, Scott Imler and Valerie Coral take local residents generous supplies of cannabis. But they're not drug runners. The cannabis they supply is free and goes only to those with a medical need. Scott Hager is one of their customers. Doors open. Hey, hey Scotty. You're here. He was paralyzed in 1982 after a swimming accident. Since then, uncontrollable muscle spasms have become part of daily life. With marijuana, I get up. I need relief. I smoke it. Within two to three minutes, the relief comes. And instantaneous and I have control. I was a member of the United States Disabled Sports Team. I won a bronze medal in Seoul, Korea in the butterfly. Sports basically is my lifeline to feeling good. It's just done everything for my self-esteem. I smoke uh, before swimming. If I didn't, I would just have incredible cramping. As we filmed Scott getting ready for his swim, his paralyzed legs started to go into violent spasm.
Well, what you saw was what I deal with every day in my life, uh, the intense muscle spasticity that really makes my situation a disability. Uh, whenever I get dressed or undressed like this in the morning, whenever I, before I start an activity, I have to deal with that type of violent physicalness. Uh, I've just smoked a little marijuana, I'm not stoned out of my mind, and I'm ready to go swim a thousand meters. Here I go. If I had taken a Valium, I'd still be sitting here shaking violently. There is no way that I could ever extend my legs like this. And the relief wouldn't come for 30 minutes and it would last for four hours. And swimming a thousand meters would not even be a consideration. Yesterday morning and the Reverend Nicholas Beddo arrives in Amsterdam to try cannabis. He was delayed by a church service. He's got high hopes that it'll help with the symptoms of his multiple sclerosis. I've never tried anything of this kind in my life before. Uh, I'm sort of uh, optimistically skeptical. Uh, if, it, if it did some good to, if I got some increased vision in my left eye, which is blind at the moment, I should be over the moon. It's his turn to go to the Hash Cafe. Hello. Right. We smoke a joint? Yeah. Never. You sure this is good stuff? It's really good stuff. Right, and I just sort of, about two puffs should, um, for a start. Okay. Start, yeah. Things I do for multiple sclerosis. Dr. Inman is at hand if needed. At the moment, it tastes a bit like very mild tobacco. You're looking too serious about it. Yeah. You need to relax a little bit. Over the next few minutes, the effect reveals itself. Do you, do you notice any difference at all? Yes, I do. What do you notice? My eyes don't hurt. They were hurting before. Oh, yes. Mm. I, iritis is something I have all the time. Mm. I certainly feel more relaxed, less stressed. That, 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 that's certainly there already and immediately. And um, the sort of the, the pain, the head, like headache I had at the back of my neck, that's, that's, that's uh, easy. It's quite strong stuff, this. I feel a slight loosening across the chest. Um, my hands are... They're fine. The eyes, the iritis is... The iritis is, is, is better. It's, it's much better. I feel better. And I, I don't... You know, I, already I don't feel as tired. Um, and my breathing is regularised. I, you know, I feel... I feel as if I could run up those stairs. Reaction to the cannabis experiment from our group of volunteers ranged from outright enthusiasm to a degree of skepticism. Now, clearly a few puffs over one evening can never be a substitute for long-term clinical tests, but even this experience did do enough to convince the group that proper research into the possible therapeutic qualities of cannabis does need to take place. Now, they know that the drug will never transform their lives overnight, but given the kind of conditions that they have to put up with day in and day out, any potential new source of relief is not to be discarded lightly. I, you know, I feel I could walk, I could do a good walk. Whether I can or not is another matter, but I feel as though I could do a really good walk, which is probably 60 or 70% of the... 70